Hey there, data is everywhere. But have you ever wondered why your data keeps crossing the line? No, it's not rebelling like Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. It's just trying to learn some regression. Whether you're new to statistics or you've been crunching numbers since Excel was invented, today we're diving into simple multiple and logistic regression and it will be entertaining, I promise. Let's kick things off with simple linear regression, the vanilla ice cream of regression models. What do you think? It's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful, it's reliable and it's the perfect place to start. Imagine you've got some data points like these dots here. They're just hanging out, enjoying life, but we need them to tell us something, like the relationship between our studied and test scores. How do we do that? We just draw a straight line through the dots. Hey, wait, not a curved line, a straight line. But do we just take a pencil and a ruler and draw a line through the dots? Of course not. There's a smarter way to do it. Simple linear regression. Simple linear regression is all about finding the best line that fits your data. This line minimizes the distance between itself and all the data points, kind of like trying to keep all your friends happy during a group project. All right, so what's the big deal about this line anyway? Why does everyone rave about it like it's the coolest thing since sliced bread? Imagine you're trying to predict how much ice cream you'll sell based on the temperature outside. You've got a bunch of dots on a graph that show past sales. Each dot is like a little story about a hot day and how many scoops you sold. Each point is therefore one day with the respective temperature and the number of ice cream scoops sold. But when you look at all those dots, it's like trying to read a story with missing pages. Confusing, right? That's where the magic of the line steps in. The line is like the plot summary that ties all those little stories together into one clear narrative. Instead of guessing where the next dot might land based on all the random dots, the line gives you a straight path to follow. It's like having a GPS for your data, helping you predict future sales with much more confidence. If you know the temperature for tomorrow, the line will give you a good estimate of how many ice cream scoops you will sell tomorrow. So why is the line better than just the dots? Because while the dots tell you what happens, the line helps you see the bigger picture and make smart predictions about what's going to happen next. The variable on the x-axis is called the independent variable or predictor. And the variable on the y-axis is called dependent variable or response. So we have one predictor, one response and a line that sums it all up. Easy peasy, right? But hold on, there's more. The equation for the line. The line has a fancy equation. Okay, maybe it's not so fancy. Y equal to B multiplied by X plus A. Here, Y is the response we're trying to predict, like the ice cream sales. X is our predictor, like the temperature. B is the slope showing how much ice cream sales change when the temperature changes. And A is the y-intercept, telling us where the line crosses the y-axis. Basically, this equation is like the secret recipe to understanding how one thing influences another. But hold on, let's open a cozy little bakery together. Of course, my money-greedy grandma immediately asks us how much we earned with it. Here's where the equation comes into play. It's like our secret recipe for predicting our earnings. Y is the total amount of money we're going to make from selling cakes. B is our profit per cake. This is like the growth of our profit with every cake sold. X is the number of cakes we sell. The more cakes we sell, the more money we make, right? A is our fixed cost. This is the money we have to pay no matter how many cakes we sell. Imagine we make $10 profit for each cake after covering the cost for ingredients. So for every cake we sell, we are adding $10 to our profit. Let's say our bakery's rent is $200 per month. That's our A. 
Now we can insert the two numbers into the equation. Suppose we want to figure out our profit after selling 30 cakes. In this case, we just enter 30 for x. Therefore, our profit y is 10 multiplied by 30 minus 200. Thus, in the case, our profit is 100. So the next time you see this equation, remember, it's just a formula for figuring out how much cash you'll have left after selling cakes and paying the rent. But wait, that was too easy. In this case, we know how much a cake costs and how many fixed costs we have. What if we don't know A and B, like in the example with the number of ice cream sold and temperature? This is where regression comes into play. With the help of regression analysis, we can calculate A and B. But regression analysis needs something to work with. It can't just pull the coefficients out of thin air like magic. To run a regression, you need data as your input. So you start to collect data. On the first day, you have sold 130 ice cream scoops and it is 27 degrees Celsius. On the second day, you have sold 144 ice cream scoops and it is 31 degrees Celsius. You do this for a total of 25 days. So you have collected data for 25 days. You can now analyze this data with the help of a regression analysis. And as the output of the regression, you get the coefficients a and b. Now we can predict the number of ice cream scoops sold using the temperature. But life isn't always that simple, right? Sometimes there's more than one thing influencing our outcome. This is where multiple linear regression comes in. Now instead of just one predictor, we've got multiple predictors. Think of it like juggling. But instead of balls, you're juggling variables like our studied, our slept and how many cups of coffee you had before the exam. In multiple linear regression, we're still finding the best line, but this time it's in multidimensional space. Instead of a simple line, we're working with a hyperplane. Fancy, right? It's like upgrading from this car to that car. Sure, it's more complex, but it also gets you where you need to go faster and more accurately. Our equation also gets a makeover. Now we have this equation. Each b here represents how much each predictor influences the outcome. It's like building a pizza. Every ingredient or predictor adds something different to the final taste. What does this mean for ice cream sales? Imagine you've realized that sales aren't just influenced by the temperature outside. Other things seem to be playing a role too. Maybe it's the day of the week and the hours of sunshine. Now you're trying to figure out how all these factors combine to affect your sales. This is where multiple regression comes in. It's like having a super smart ice cream calculator. In multiple regression, the equation might look like this. Y is your total ice cream sales. This is what you're trying to predict. X1 is the temperature outside. We know that on hotter days, people crave more ice cream. X2 is hours of sunshine. X3 is whether it's a weekend or a weekday. A is your base level of sales when everything else is zero. B1, B2 and B3 are the regression coefficients that tell you how much each factor influences your total sales. But just as in the case of simple linear regression, we also need data in the case of multiple linear regression. In addition to ice cream sales and temperature, we now need hours of sunshine and whether it is a weekend or not. Here zero stands for weekday and one for weekend. Now we can use regression analysis to calculate the coefficients. Ready to dive in? If you'd like, you can load this example dataset and try it out on your own. The link to load the data is in the video description. To calculate a regression, we visit datadep.net and click on Regression. Here's our data. We can now simply select the dependent variable, which in our case is ice cream sales, and the independent variables, temperature, sunshine hours and weekend. Here you can see the results. We are interested in this table. 
If you want to know how to interpret the other tables, just click on AI interpretation. So let's now have a closer look at this table. Let's keep things simple, so let's focus on this area of the table. If you want to know more about the other results, check out my videos on regression or our book. Here we see the calculated regression coefficients. These values can now be inserted into our regression equation. First we have the constant, which is the A in the equation. Then we have the temperature, the hours of sunshine and whether it is a weekday or weekend. So if the temperature is 1 degree hotter, we have a sale increase of $14.52. If the sun shines 1 hour more a day, we have a sales increase of $14.73. And if it is weekend, so we have 1 here, we have 63.2 more sales as on a weekday. So again, for every degree the temperature rises, our sales increase by $14.52. If the sun shines for an additional hour, we see a sales boost of $14.73. And if it's a weekend, we'll have $63.20 more in sales compared to a weekday. Let's say the weather forecast predicts 27 degrees for tomorrow. The sun is expected to shine for 7 hours. And since tomorrow is a weekday, we enter zero here. After calculating, our regression model estimates that we'll make $533.6 in sales tomorrow. So according to our multiple regression model, we are predicting $533.6 in ice cream sales for the day. Amazing, right? And now for the grand finale, logistic regression. It's the drama queen of regression models. Why? Because it's all about making decisions. Yes or no, true or false, cats or dogs. Okay, maybe not that last one, but you get the idea. So unlike simple and multiple linear regression, which deal with continuous outcomes, logistic regression helps us figure out the probability of a binary outcome, like yes or no, pass or fail, cat person or dog person. Instead of drawing a straight line, logistic regression draws a curve, specifically an S-shaped curve called the sigmoid function. This curve helps us estimate the probability of our outcome falling into one of two categories. It's like being a referee at the sports game, deciding who is in and who is out, based on the data. The equation looks a bit more complex than our previous one. Here P represents the probability of the outcome happening. The right side of the equation is familiar, it's like the one we used in multiple linear regression, but we are working on a log scale. Why? Because probabilities are a tricky business and we need to keep them between 0 and 1. No one likes a probability greater than 100%, right? So in linear regression, we dealt with values that could spread across the entire y-axis. However, in logistic regression, our dependent variable is either 0 or 1. Regardless of the values of the independent variables, the outcome will always be either 0 or 1. A linear regression would now simply fit a straight line through the points. But in linear regression, the predicted values can theoretically range from negative to positive infinity. However, the goal of logistic regression is to estimate the probability of an event occurring. Therefore, the predicted values should range between 0 and 1. So we need a function that outputs values exclusively between 0 and 1. And that's exactly what the logistic function does. No matter where we are on the x-axis, from negative to positive infinity, the function only produces values from 0 to 1. Remember though, logistic regression isn't just for yes-no questions. It's also used when you're dealing with categories, like predicting whether someone will vote for a candidate A, B or C. If you just have two categories, it is called binary logistic regression. It's versatile, powerful and yes, a bit dramatic, but who doesn't love a little drama in their data? 
All right, so now you know what simple multiple and logistic regression are. But how do you actually use them in the real world? Let's dive into some examples. Imagine you're a data scientist for a company trying to predict sales. Simple linear regression can help you see how advertising budget affects sales. But what if there are multiple factors like pricing and competitor actions? That's where multiple linear regression comes in. It allows you to see the combined effect of all these factors. And if you're in the field of healthcare, you might want to predict whether a patient has a certain disease based on their symptoms and test results. Logistic regression is your go-to tool here. It helps you estimate the probability that a patient belongs to one category, diseased, or another, not diseased. Of course, with great power comes great responsibility. While regression models are incredibly useful, they are not without their pitfalls. Each regression model comes with its own set of assumptions like linearity, independence and homoscedasticity. Ignoring these is like skipping the instructions on a piece of IKEA furniture. Trust me, it won't end well. If you would like to know more about regression analysis, take a look at my full tutorial or our book Statistics Made Easy. So why did the data cross the line? To learn regression, of course. Simple multiple and logistic regression each has its own unique strengths and quirks. Whether you're predicting sales, diagnosing diseases or just trying to understand your data better, these tools are here to help. Just remember, with a little practice and a lot of curiosity, you'll be crossing the line and making predictions like a pro in no time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.